Greetings to you all in the name of Jesus Christ, wherever you are. We thank God for this beautiful day. We thank God for this beautiful day. And I pray that you will be awakened to the reality of his presence, that you will walk through your day with him consciously, knowing that he's with you, in you, together with him, that is on your side, that is fighting for you, and is your power, your strength, your victory, and your hope. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, I pray. It is a blessing, once again, to always have this wonderful opportunity to share the word the gospel. The word of God, which is a person of Jesus Christ. This gospel is the message. This gospel is the message. This gospel is the message. The true message of all time that contains everything in the past, present, future, that contains the true knowledge of what man is supposed to know about him, about God, about life, about everything. It is the message that reveals the mysteries that were hidden for ages. So we have an opportunity to hear and to learn and discover these things are not just stories. They are realities. They are alive to those who have found them or believe. Now we have in the book of John, the Gospel of St. John chapter 12, verse 31. Verse 31, we read, Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be cast out. Along the way, Jesus was still, of course, talking about his uh, his glorification and how suppose that how his glorification was supposed to destroy the separation uh, between the Jews and the Gentiles and bring about harmony and unity, bring about oneness and union. And uh, in these lines, Jesus then was speaking about uh, when he was talking about that. He said he mentioned something very very interesting in verse thirty one. He says, "Now is the judgment of." this world i want you to understand first when he said now it meant now he's talking about the time the now it's been uh, more than 200 two thousand years and he was declaring the end he was talking about now now something was going to happen about was going to happen back then when jesus was speaking or uh, saying these words so it is he was about to die, of course, and something huge was, was about to happen in his death, which will, of course, continue to discover. But then in his death, when once uh, be, before he died, he was saying, now the, is the judgment of this world. Now is the judgment of this world. So I want to explain what he means, what it meant by uh, the judgment of this world. You know, when people hear judgment, and most times when you hear the judgment of God, they intend to get it negatively. You see, people have been, uh, have been, uh, have inherited the fallen mindset. And that fallen mindset is composed of the knowledge of good and evil. You remember in Genesis when uh, what happened to Adam and Eve they began to know, they, they were awakened to the fact that they were uh, naked after eating of the other uh, fruit or the, from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So there's something that was rooted in, the man, in, in man, and uh, hence he began to think of good and evil, good and evil. So when then the Bible talks about the judgment, Every time they think about the judgment, they think of something very negative. But do we have a God that is divided? Do we have a God that is inconsistent? Do we have a God that is not, uh, who's somehow light and darkness? Or we only have light? The perception we have uh, towards God, most times they are not fair. And 
in fact, they are wrong because of that idea of good and evil. So since among men's thoughts and ideas, there's this flow of good and evil, they always think that there's good and evil also on the side of God. And so because of this uh, belief, it is one of the reason why uh, when they hear the word like judgment, it is definitely negative. But when Jesus was saying, now is the judgment of this world, he didn't mean what we might think of the judgment. The judgment, one, he meant, uh, yes, the judgment. And the judgment in the eyes of God, it is to bring about uh, restoration or to bring about the correction or bring, cause everything to be in its proper place. The judgment we knew or we had or people were used to, first and foremost, you hear most times Jesus addressing to the injustice. See, the judgment is not necessarily bad because even on our side, there are times uh, what the judge declares will bring about justice towards those who are uh, suffering or who have been um, wronged in one way or the other. So the judgment can be good also because it will bring about justice. It will bring about justice. And that is what we should get from this word uh, judgment. So what was the purpose of God to judge? For Why would he want to judge? See, again, we attribute a lot of things which are not true to God. A thing that is seated there or standing there just looking at us and trying to judge whether we're doing right or we're doing it wrong. God understands how man has uh, fallen into this evil trap and man needed to be redeemed or to be saved, not to be judged. You could not judge a man who's already a dying person, you know. If a person had, uh, was in a state of death, what judgment would you again uh, bring or would you rather judge that person who's already dead or you do something to save him from his condition. Of course, in the eyes of men, people will not do that. But God's judgment was the best judgment or was the judgment they were looking for. And what was his judgment? His judgment was to deal or destroy everything that caused man to fall into that trap. Everything that separated man from God. You see, he wanted to de deal with the issue. He was correcting, was amending the problem. He was bringing about the solution. That is the judgment. The judgment of God is his justice. He wanted to bring about justice, justice which was not on the earth and in the world. And of course, when we hear justice again, most times we think of, yes, justice because God will judge you according to what you did or what you did not do. Again, his justice does not work like that. It is based on who he is. It is based on his nature, on his mercy and grace, whereby he sets man free by dealing or destroying what was destroying man. You know, that is the true judgment. That is the true justice that God was establishing on the earth. And I want you to remember that man, uh, all men, I'm talking about humanity, humankind, the sins and the sin problem was caused by one man. It is not all of us who came together and and advised Adam to sin or Eve. We are not even born yet. We are not there. But we are told that one man sinned and all men became sinners. So if you are tr a true judge, how would you judge that case? So when God is judging, he understands how things began, what the problem is. So his judgment is to bring forth justice is to bring forth salvation so he wanted to restore everything he wanted to save you see 
Otherwise, Jesus wouldn't have come. Because if the purpose was to judge the earth, then he would not come to, they would not mention anything that has to do with salvation. You see, because by the time you talk about redemption, it means the punishment is removed. Because you, you cannot redeem and then punish. You can only redeem somebody who needs, who is in, in a critical condition that needs your redemption. So we are so evil, that we, we could not, how God could not judge us further. But his judgment has been misinterpreted. And to put all things in context, you realize what God was even judging. He was talking about the ruler of this world be cast out see what his judgment was not even towards us the judgment was up towards the rule of this world and i will talk i will come back on that but my submission is the judgment of god is always good his judgment is not a human uh, judgment it's not in the perspective of men when god judges you should be excited because he has to bring that means god is bringing forth justice for instance, um, for instance, when you read in John chapter 3, verse 17, the Bible says, For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. So if you think judgment is condemnation, that is not what the Bible is teaching. He says then, if you want to know it, God did not send his son in the world to be condemned. See, the world was already condemned. So you cannot condemn somebody who's already condemned. Rather, he said, he sent his son to be, so that the world may be saved. So I wanted to first introduce this or bring about the right perspective. We should understand the judgment of God. He is not judging the world because the world was already judged. He's not trying to punish everybody because we're already in punishment. He's not trying to put to hell to anybody already in hell. He's not trying to kill anybody. People already dead in their trespasses, in their sins. I mean, what we, we were waiting for was salvation. The only thing you can do is to save or you leave them where they are. They're already dead. So the judgment, you have to be excited once you hear the judgment of God. You have to be excited because it has something to do with you. It has to save you. It has to help you. His judgment is the right judgment. It's the pure judgment. The divine judgment is different from this world's judgment or the way people think about judgment. So he says, now is the judgment of this world. Oh my, my, which world was he talking about? Thank God for his love. And kindness and his judgment is the best judgment it produces salvation to us we see more